This is a place where the legends before us carried on a legacy of winning. Uh, easy. Pitch out. Oh, oh, oh. 40, 35, 30, 20, 50. Touchdown, easy. No flag. It has always been the passion, determination, and teamwork that makes it who we are. To give to Diamond Ferry. Gets around the corner, one man to beat, steps it up, he's oh. gone! They're not gonna catch him! No, no, Nobody's gonna catch him, he's gone for the touchdown! A commitment to excellence is our way of life. Pass and it is intercepted! Who else but Lucas Dennis is there to pick it? And it's a pick six forever! Touchdown! Christmas time! Winning is what we know and what we do. Hello, everybody. I am Jonathan Bermotchins. You are watching EHS Channel 15, and we are live on YouTube as well. Thank you all for tuning in right now. Tonight, we have the Ever Crimson Tide going up against the 2-6 and six Lowell Red Raiders. There you see head coach getting the team ready for tonight's game. So, Crimson Tide did not make the playoffs. They were... I think a 17 or 18 seed since Everett is in the GBL. We have four teams in the GBL that are Division 3 and 4. And I'm going to list those three teams that are in Division 3 right now, which is Revere, Lynn English, Malden, and Somerville. Excuse me, that's four. And I think we have another one that's five, which is ridiculous. So we got screwed out of that because we have a weak division and we didn't play enough Catholic Conference teams. So here we are for the consolation game. Where basically a six and seven one Crimson Tide team goes up against a two and six Lowell Red Raiders here at Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Everett, Massachusetts, and we'll have kickoff soon. As you can see, the Red Raiders are practicing away. Decent football pass right there. <laughs> and we wait the Crimson Tide football players to come out. Chile is getting ready, and. I was just told we will have another consolation game next week. Whoever loses in the playoffs in the low seeds between maybe 12 or 16, we'll say. And we'll pick it up and play them next week, whoever that team may be. And we'll probably be likely on the road because the MIA just does not care about Everett at all. We're just an afterthought, after Dib left, basically. And that's okay. Because we'll come back faster, bigger, and stronger than ever the following year. There you see how chilly it is. Just dancing around. Big red truck in the background. So I have the power rating systems here by definition for the MMA, MIA rules. I'm not going to read it everything front to back. I'm just reading, reading out a few things so you guys can understand. Why do they have COVID stuff in here? Who cares about COVID? It's over with. COVID poor call. Who cares about that? How does it work? Here's the math. The rank formula uses variables of win, loss, MOV, and SOS. I don't know what that is. Don't ask me. And produces a rating through irritation. Take initial round of results, enter them back into the formula, and then run them again and again and again. Do it enough times, and eventually it'll get the point where there is little, no change in the numbers. And you have your answer in a form of power ratings. Why is margin of victory important? Because why not? There you see the kicker right there for Lowell. Cameron Drinken. He's a senior wide receiver D-back. You see Lowell forming a line of a wall. Head coach for Lowell High Red Raiders is Shane Cullen. Assistant coach Kyle Sweden. Joseph Harris, the assistants. Andrew Safaya. Jordan Bolarajo. Ronan Dunn. And Bobby, oh, I'm not going to pronounce that big Greek word. And Charles Nagby. 
Head coach of the Crimson Tide is Justin Flores. And a bunch of assistants. That is not listed in front of me right now. I just feel bad for the seniors who are not going to be able to compete in the tournament. If we did make the tournament, we played St. John's Prep. And historically, when we play St. John's Prep in the playoffs, we basically... It's not really a rivalry, more of a domination. So we're basically 5-1 and one against them in the playoffs. My math might be off a little bit, but it is what it is with that. So... That being said, we'll see the refs in the middle getting ready to go here. Bob is... Where is Bob? Paul is at the horse racing in New York. I think it's the stakes. And Bob? Bob's doing his thing. Bob went on vacation a little while ago, and he's probably enjoying it. In the nice hot sun and tropical views of Florida. You see a little huddling up right now. I can't help it. I'm a big kid around the house. You know? so, I, get, I, get, I tell them, I'm glad that you want me around so much. You know, Crimson Tide Band is here, drumming away. As we await for the Crimson Tide to come on out. Oh, strength of schedule is the SOS I said earlier. For rating purposes, set all the team value based on variables. You can calculate what a new rating would be using this value. Then you should continue and calculate the new ratings based on the old ratings. What? That makes zero sense to me until the numbers associated with a variable stopping changes. As these numbers have stopped changing, you have numbers associated with each team that solves the ratings formula, and these numbers are the ratings for the respective teams. All right. Hope that helped a little bit. Still a garbage playoff system we have here. Hopefully, Crimson Tide can move on and play more Division I teams instead of three and four teams that we have this year and the previous years. Back in 2010 and 2011, they pushed us down to Division II when we absolutely steamrolled Division II and beat, I think, Lincoln Sudbury for the Super Bowl because those little dibs. Jonathan DiBiase was senior year. remember that night clearly because I was here in the booth doing camera work. Crimson Tide will be out here shortly. Kickoff is in two minutes. Again, this is not a playoff game. This is a consolation game. Due to our weak GBL system that we have here. Thanks to MAAA. By the way, these comments are my own and not reflection of the school at all. Here come the Crimson Tide, led by a few seniors. You see Papa, Christian Zamor, and Jason Prophet. So the seniors will have two more games. Whoever the loser of the MIAA tournament is and Thanksgiving, which is coming up soon. You see, it'll be Thanksgiving before you know it. Right when Labor Day weekend rolls around, the last three, four months go by with a snap of the fingers. Enjoy our PA, Josh Del Gazo. for tonight's game. For the Lowell Red Raiders, number two, Ebenezer Anand II. Number four, Cameron Durkin. Number 44, Aiden Melanazzo. And number 59, Dylan Manning. And for your Everett Crimson Tide, number 14, Pedro Rodriguez. Number three, Jaden Prophet. Don't forget to vote for Pedro. Number 46, Dominic Papa. Papa, don't preach. Number two, Christian Zamor. And he's not with us tonight, but number 50, Aiden Duclos. Want to give a shout out to Christian Zamor? 
give a special shout out to Aiden. He underwent surgery on his shoulder yesterday, and we would like to extend our best wishes on his recovery. Ooh, hopefully it wasn't rotated off. There's a flip of the coin. I don't know if it's headers or tails, but it looks like Everett wants the ball. And they'll switch sides. Josh, what kind of shoulder surgery? Uh, I believe it's his rotator cuff. Oof. Yeah, you can give a shout out too, Bert. Aiden Ducos, number 50, had rotator cuff surgery, which I'm trying to avoid because I have terrible shoulders at the good age of 41. They see the Crimson Tide huddle up, get a nice hoo-rah-rah -rah speech, whatever that might be. and remove all headwear in honor of America for the playing of our national anthem performed by the Everett High School Marching Band. So Everett will be receiving the ball. Lowell will be kicking it off. They're smart, they're just kicking it out of bounds. The Red Raiders should. Let's see if Lowell kicks it deep or just does a swip kick. Again, this is Jonathan Bermachin. You're watching EHS Channel 15, where the Ever Crimson Tide will be hosting the Lowell Red Raiders. And we're just getting ready for kickoff. And off we go with an onside kick. Goes right down. Kickoff recovered by number 19, Joao Barreros. Joel Barreros recovers that. And Eric gets solid football field position. Hey! Here comes the offense. Offense has been crushing it this year. I think close to over three or 400 points this season. Defense just about under 100, close to 100 points they've given up this past season. There's a beautiful 51 degrees tonight, partly cloudy, here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Shotgun formation, wide right on the trips. 
Keeps it himself, going up the gut. Number two, Christian Zamor. The Zamor, ball getting about four or five yards there. Brought down by number 44, Aiden Milanazzo. Aiden Milanazzo with a tackle for low. Six yard gain on the play, second down. Right on it, Ron. Second and six for the Crimson Tide now. You know, for a new guy, you're pretty good. You're good at it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Christian Zamor. Motion. Twins left. Takes the ball, takes it himself, goes to the outside. Got a lane, goes to the inside, tries to cut it, and got the first down. Some more on the carry. That's going to be good for a Crimson Tide first down. You see number 11 for Lowell there. That's Seth Lai. Here's the replay. Block right there, nice block. Number 11 got a decent block right there. Tries to cut inside. Stays in bounds. Clock is running. We got trips to the left this time. Shotgun again. There might be too many men in the backfield, the way that formation is. I could be wrong. Nope, good. Whoa, whoa. Fumble. And Lowell will receive it. Lowell miscommunication there. Big guy, number 77 for Lowell. Recovered by Lowell. 77 there with the fumble recovery. St. Elliot Anayo on the recovery. St. Elliot Anayo, there you go. Number 10 had it. They just bumped into each other. A little miscommunication there. Big man falls right on it. He's like 6'2", 250. Ooh, if he ain't going D2 or D1, you guys are missing out. All right, here comes the Lowell Red Raiders. They got trips right as well. Shock on formation. And a solo wide receiver to the left. Excuse me, right. Motion. Going deep. To number 15. Out of reach. Broken up by number six. Number 10, Jack Casey. Jeremiah Jelinius. Broken up by number six, Jeremiah Gene Lewis. Gene Lewis, excuse me. Second down. You see the replay. Has all day. So like, you know what? I'm going to one-on-one -on -one coverage. Good ball right there. Yep, good job breaking it up. Jack Casey's your quarterback for Lowell. Back to pass. Completed at the 50 and tackled around the 46 yard line. And it'll be a Lowell first down. To number four, Cameron Durkin. Durkin with the catch. That's good for a Red Raiders first down. Durkin playing D back and wide receiver. Twins left and right. Shock information again. That looks like to be in a 3-4 defense. He's got a little zip on that ball. Pass complete to Durkin. Complete again to Durkin. About six, seven yards there. First. G. Lewis on the tackle. Second down and four. Gene Lewis and Durkin are going to have some fun tonight. They'll be battling it all. The next three quarters here. As is three nine thirty to go here in the first quarter. Motion. Wide open is number five for Lowell. Hit out of bounds. That's Michael Gill. Casey's pass complete to number six, Michael Gill. First down for Lowell, Red Raiders. That's good for another Lowell first down. Trips left. Got a solo wide receiver on the right. Oh, we got the offensive coordinator changing it up here. I think he's telling him to shave his beard a little bit and don't forget his head. Fix it up up top. Fix the handoff. Swing pass. Oh, yeah, catch that, bro. Yeah, catch that. Yeah, the wide open field. 
I do not have five on my roster. I, I said his name earlier. Yeah. I mean, Josh just said number six is named Gil, Mr. Gil there. There's the McKenzie family. Played with their sons way back in the late 90s. That's how old I am. Here's another pass. Looks like a screen. Oh, it was picked off. Is that Papa? Yep. Dominic Papa read up the whole way. Sitting back in the linebacker position, saw the lineman come out. Here we go. There you see number one. I'm oh, just gonna block. No, I'm not. I'm gonna sneak out to the left here. Papa's like, nope, not today. Oh, could have picked six right there. Good job breaking it up. It'll be third and ten now. Trips right. Wait, that's left, excuse me. Back to pass again. Go for the solo route, and that's broken up. But number nine. Kevin Diaz is hyped, breaking up that pass, making the fourth and ten. On the 33 yard line. Look at that jump, boom. That ball, wow, that ball got batted back there. Twins right and left. Looks like a little olive ball on the sidelines there. Or it looks like they're in a two. Down lineman, no three. Two and a half down. <laughs> because with Kenzie off the edge, going deep. And everyone take over on downs. Number 13, Dalton Michelle on the coverage. And the Crimson Tide will take over on downs. So the Crimson Tide has some safety help on that one. Because several plays before that, it was just one on one. And number 15 for the Crimson Tide. Did a good job bringing that up. So Everett will travel about six or seven yards. We got a TD here. You see Damian Lacklin, Carlos Rodriguez in the backfield. Looks like shotgun again as we zoom out. And the trips right. Motion man. Quick pass to 81. Gets met right away. But got some positive yardage there. Looks like about three, four yards there. Lasseter with the catch. It's his first of the night. There you see the cheerleaders cheering. And of course they stop when I, when I say something. <laughs> We have twins to the left. 81 in the slot. Christian motion. Not making it trips. Hand it off. Going nowhere. Wells defense did a good job breaking that up. Number 10, Damian Lackland, the ball got met by hosts of Red Raiders. Brought down by number 60, Arculius Tavares. There you see the players getting the signals from the Justin Flores, their head coach. A little miscommunication. That looks like it'll be trips left. With some more solo on the right right there. Shotgun back to pass, got his time, pressure coming, moves up, thinks he's going to throw it, nope, he's going to take off, and he might lose a yard or two on that one, we'll make a fourth and 13. Christian Ty is struggling so far here early in the first quarter, here you see, he has time, he's time, looking for someone to get open, moves up in the pocket, thinks about it. He's like, nah, I'm going to try to take off. Good job right there by number 11. The ankle tackle right there. That's Seth Liv. Here's the punt. Ooh, that's a muff one. Maybe a seven-yard punt. Usually, normally. You 
You saw a threat coming from the right. Crapped his pants a little bit and just tried to get it off as quick as he could. Hey, you see Mr. O'Brien conducting the band with his nice tan leather jacket. That'll be first and ten for Lowland on the 40 yard line in every territory. Shot confirmation again. Trips right. He ain't going nowhere. Maybe a yard if that. Ever causing fusion in the backfield there. There you see, McKenzie getting off his blockers. Papa's in there as well. Who else am I missing? Jason Stark. No relation to Tony Stark. Back to pass. Nice pass. Woo! That was a dot. It's number 18. Ryan Colley. Jack Casey's got an arm there, folks. Trips right again. Solo wide receiver to the left. Shot confirmation. Looks like Everton a 4-3 D now. Hand off to number one. Papa gets there. With... And number 13, it looks like, too. Donald Michael. Possibly holding. Michelle. As we await the refs. Does this ref know where he is right now? <laughs> So it's going to be holding on Lowell, I believe. They'll push him back 10. There you see the handoff. Let's see where the holding is. Yeah, it could be 65 right there holding him. Or, yep, right there. That's number two for the Crimson Tide. Number 18 holding right there, too. So those two holdings. Jack Kesey, throw up gang signs, shotgun again, back to pass, low pressure, nice ball, just a little bit too far, he's got a good ball, just out of reach to Colin Christensen. See, he was a freshman. He's about like 6'1", 180 pounds soaking wet. Do you see Lowell getting the offensive signals from the coach? He's rubbing his hands together. It's probably cold. Now he's crossing his arms. What would you like? What would you like him for? Twins to the left and right. Shot confirmation again. Casey back to pass. Has a lot of time. Going deep again. And it's picked off. Pass is intercepted by number six, Jeremiah Jean Lewis. Jeremiah Jean Lewis read out the whole way. Jack Casey just threw it a little too far. If he threw it underneath a little bit, he might have had him there, but no. Here's the replay. Casey back to pass. Here comes the pressure from the Crimson Tide. Nice ball. Beautiful ball. Basically playing defense right there for a little number five. He was right there waiting for it. Gets a good chunk of yardage back on that interception. His teammates are right there to pump him up and coaches as well. 
So five or six to go here in the first quarter. Crimson Tide gets the ball back at their 24, 23 yard line. Hand off up the gut. Spins. Got some room. Might have gotten the first down there. Yeah, it looks like he did. Damian Lackland gets the first down. Everest going hurry up. Here he is again to the left. Bounces to the outside. Gains about five yards there. Lackland, the ball carrier. Everest going no huddle, it looks like it right here for this series. Lackland, two carries, about 16 yards right there. Second down. Shotgun again. Hands it off in the middle. Wide open hole in the middle there. Good job there. Arm tackle the by the freshman there. there. Colin Christensen. Colin Christensen on the tackle. Solid run by Damian Lackland. As he gets the first down for us. There you see. Great blocking right there. Number 68. Had a nice gap right there. Player run to get the first down. Are they holding hands on the way down there? It's like a wrist tackle. Two trips left. Fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. That's some more. About a yard or two on that play. Crimson Tide running the ball, shooting the club. One yard gain on the play, second down. As in the little Giants movie. Gain the whole yard. Ooh. Rodriguez and Lackland in the backfield. Lackland gets it. And he'll be just shy of the first down. Lackland on the carry. Great blocking by the O line. They're setting a nice little wall for him. They'll just bounce off to the outside, the too. Third down and three. Marvin D, number 68. Doing a good job in his offensive lineman as well. The big old hogs. Lackland, ooh, bounces off one tackle. Short of the first down. Gained another yard there. It'll be fourth and three now. Fourth down. Two yards to go. And it looks like Christian Zamora is going to be taking the shotgun snap. He could hand it off to Manny San Diego or keep it for himself. We'll see here. Trips left, shotgun formation. Could be a direct snap to 22 as well. We got motion. Delay game? Yep, delay game. Oh, good. The mic's working. Couldn't hear him the first time. Christian Zamora. Smiling. Fourth and seven now. Carlos Rodriguez comes back in to play QB. Looks like they're not going to be doing that direct snap. So Rodriguez and Santiago in the backfield. Back to pass, has time, tosses it. Ooh, broken up by the freshman. Colin Christensen. 
Because it'd be a force on Lowell. Bright future ahead of him and Lowell. Lowell will take over on downs. Let's see the replay. Has all day cuts in front of the receiver. Just bats his arm up, breaks it up. Can the Crimson Tide make another stop here? The little sluggish offensive series here. Lowell's bringing it. Here's Jack Kesey. Motion. Hand it off. Reverse. Half back pass. We can go DB's wide open. Oh, and just out of reach. Yeah, had two wide open guys. Pass is incomplete. It was there. He had Anthony Perez. Number one, Anthony Perez. And Christian. Second Colin down. Christensen wide open. Just a bit overthrown. Here we go. Oh, no, you take it. Yeah, I'm going to take this ball. He is wide open. Oh, you know, day and just out of reach. That was a six right there. Oh. Yeah, short. Sorry, yeah, too long. Out of reach. So it'll be second and ten for the Red Raiders. Casey back to pass, hands it off. Little play action, going nowhere. Perez, the ball carrier. Tackle by number one, Shane McKenzie. Deanne Shane McKenzie. Two yard loss of the play, third down. You see McKenzie, outstanding defensive end. For the Crimson Tide. He's a senior. Shout out to all the Crimson Tide seniors. I feel bad for them to make the tournament. The silly MMA playoff system. They should be playing St. John's Prep, but it's in another alternate universe. But here we are playing Lowell. Struggling here in the first quarter. Casey back to pass, has time. And did he catch it? I think he was struggling on the way down. And Pass it is a first down. To number four, Cameron Durkin. Cameron Durkin. First down, Lowell. That's his second reception of the night. You see Casey back to pass, looking. Nice throw. A little behind him. Held on to it. Durkin. This is third reception tonight, I believe. Casey hands it off. It's number one. Gets a tough five or six yards in that one. Perez on the carry. Pop up on the tackle. Perez gets six yards. Papa gets another tackle. Six yard gain on the play. Second down. And that should do it for the first quarter. And that'll do it for the end of the first quarter. No score here. Both teams off to a slow start. Okay, you see the handoff again. A line doing a decent job blocking right there. Papa. Saying, ah, ah. No more for you. He's going to take you down right. Yeah. No score here in the first quarter. I want to thank you all for tuning in on the just Channel 15 if you're an Everett. But live on the YouTube, on the Tammy Turner's account, I am Jonathan Bird Marchant of 95 The Sports Hub. I am flying solo tonight. Bob and Paul are away. Bob's in Florida, I think. Paul's at the uh, Belmont Stakes in New York. Horse racing, gambling away. Good for him. There you see the Crimson Tide. Huddled up. Get a pep top from one of their coaches. Yeah, it's 50 degrees right now, partly cloudy in Everett, Veterans Memorial Stadium.
All right, we'll start the second quarter with a second and four. Twins in motion. Hands it up, up the middle. Everett's defensive line saying, nope. Not going to get it. We'll see who's in the tackle there. Brought down by number 16, Jason Stark. All right, Jason Stark holding it down on the D-line there. Matthew Marker you just saw right there. Shotgun again, twins on the left and right. Run back to the left. We got motion again, same play. Looks like it, but this time he's passing. Oh, he got him picked off. Oh, Christian Zamora was sitting there reading it just a second too late. Christian Zamora with the breakup. Here we see the replay. Number five's in motion. Has some time, some late pressure right there. Oh. And we got a flag on the. No, there's no flag, but there's a sideline warning for the Crimson Tide, which I just missed. That play was broken up. Look at this, Kristen Zamora, like it. Tied foul file, as I get my Mr. Mark Ross on, he's 6'2", 195 pounds. Fourth and three. As the Rodriguez await the signals from the coaches, getting ready to run the play. Casey rubbed his hands. Our lineman calling out the front line. Back to pass. Ooh, pressure was there. Just short. McKenzie coming in. Breaking it up quick. Pressure on the play by Shane McKenzie. And Don Mitchell was also there. The Just in case. He made the catch there. There you see Casey. McKenzie's right in his grill. Out of reach. The freshman wide receiver. So the Crimson Tide defense stiffen the Red Raiders there. On the turnover downs again. Yeah, motion. Rolls to the right, wide open. Rodriguez pass complete to number 81, Elijah Lassiter. Lassiter. That's good for a Crimson Tide. Got to come back to the ball a little bit and slide for it. His replay again, rolls to his right. He has a few options there. Fullback's like, hey, I'm open, but no, I'm going to my wide receiver right here. Right in the bread basket falls. Right down. There's another pass. Christian tries to make a move. Oh, we got a late flag. Some more. Durkin on the tackle. There is a flag on the play. People in both are saying it's a dead ball foul. Could be personal. Could be a face mask. Could be some garbage talking. The rest didn't like. I can't read his lips. Wish I knew what he was saying. From the spot. I heard him say the spot. Okay. Refs chit chatting around the 50. Personal foul. <laughs> Personal foul. Anybody. Okay, it's on Lowell. It's a personal foul on Lowell. We just don't know the number or the name or the rank. Nothing else, guys. <laughs> All right, we're going to back up. Just do what the ref says. So it'll be a first out for the Crimson Tide. Was it 10 or 15 yards is the question. Yeah. I was just told this is Dan's first time being the head ref, so it was 
Got a little butterflies in his stomach. First time with the mic. Oh, head ref first time with the microphone, so he's probably got some butterflies in his stomach. <laughs> and that's all right. He's a good man. We got trips right again. Number five telling him what route to run, and we have a timeout ever, right? rightfully so. A little bit of confusion out there. I think Gillian Ligon knew what route to run on that one. A little miscommunication in the Crimson Tire Park. We got to talk it over and smooth things over. A brisk 50 degrees today. A little bit on the cold side tonight. Nothing we can't handle because we're New Englanders. I got college breaking news. Michigan Fires recruiting analysis. Carl Stalin. All right. That just popped up on my phone. So we have trips right again. With Carlos Rodriguez and Damian Lacklin in the back. There's the motion, back to pass, quick out. Nice catch by Christian Zamor. Rodriguez pass complete to Christian Zamor. They'll be second and three now. Second down and three. All right, we got twins left. Yeah. on again. Has it gone under the center yet? Which is interesting to me. Here's the handoff. Spin move. Blackland. Blackland, the ball carrier. Right between the guy and the center there. That's good for a crimson tie. Let's take a look at this beautiful replay here. 54 pull around. Nice spin move. Pop out the block. And just falls forward for the first down. And we have an injury timeout. Someone's cramping up out there. I saw him stretch his feet earlier. Lackland won too many Red Bulls before the game, maybe. You see Gene O'Brien, his nice tail of the jacket with the band. Some beautiful cowhide there. <laughs> Damian Lack with number 10. 5'6", 155. Position you see right there. Run back, wide receiver. He did have five Russian touchdowns one night. Not tonight, but he did have five. Yeah. Which game was that, Josh? Um, five touchdowns, I believe. Oh, let me jog that. I think that was Revere. Yeah, I think it was against Revere. I could be wrong. Some statistician will correct me. There's a happy mother waving to somebody. Oh, well, it's D. They're going to stop the Crimson Tide here. They have a nice little drive here. Here comes the Crimson Tide. There's a coach cam right there for you. Oh, George Holman. George Holman, chilling up in the bucket. Josh, we should have a bucket camera next year. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah. I would like that. We'll have to talk to the committee and get some funds. Twofold. Use it for, they use it for huddle, and then we could just tie it into our collection. That's a great shot. It's a beautiful shot. Let's give it up for number 10. Damien Lackland. Damien Lackland cramping up. Oh, yeah, that's a cramp. I can tell by the walk. We've all been there if you're an athlete. Doesn't matter what sport it is. As they pick him up. I mean, it's Santiago coming in now. He's a hard runner. Scored, he scored last week, right? Yeah, he scored a touchdown on two last week. He had two last week. And he also had one against Revere. He's a junior. 
Back to pass. Oh! Pass is incomplete. Zamore, the intended receiver. Zamore had to turn around for that one. Second down. By the time he turned around, the ball is right in his face. That's a tough catch to make there. Carlos Rodriguez getting the signal from Coach Flores. Coach Flores is also the offensive coordinator. As you know. Well, if you don't know, now you know. Rodriguez, here's the motion. Gets the pass. There he goes. Oh, nice ankle tackle right there by number 23. Pass is complete to Zamora. Christopher Doobie. Brought down by number 23, Christopher Doobie. <laughs> Third down and five. Third and five for the Crimson Tide. Now you see the cheerleaders cheering away. So we have twins right. They've been shotgun all night. Try to repeat. Hand it up up the middle. Look at him go. He got a first down and more. Manny Santiago. Go between the center and the guard there. Wide open there. Who's the right guy there? Great job blocking there, my man. Here we go. Number 54 and 55. Look at that wall. Look at that lane. Look at that. Boom. First down. Beautiful thing. Offensive line coaches be happy with that. Here we go again. Nice cut. Got two hands on the ball, thankfully. Santiago, the ball carrier. Manny Santiago getting some carries. As Damian Lackland looks to get the cramps out. Yes, Look at him go. Falling his blockers. Puts his helmet Second down. 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 Two hands on the ball. Especially when you run up the middle, you gotta have two hands on the ball. So one can just smack it right out of there. You don't want that to happen. Oh, hey, 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 can't do that. Laundry on the field. That's a first down for the Crimson Tide. Let's oh, forget the turn on spike. Like. <laughs> They see the Crimson Tide band as we got first down for the Crimson Tide as they enter the red zone. Crimson Tide's first trip into the red zone tonight. Looking to punch it in. Looking for Santiago to get it right out the middle again. Nope, he keeps it. And he gets in there for the touchdown. Touchdown, Crimson Tide! Carlos Rodriguez. Number seven, Carlos Rodriguez. Gets the Crimson Tide six. As Everett looks to make it seven, here's the replay of the touchdown. He's like, nah, I'm going to keep it and take off. Look at that open space right there. Walks right into his teammate, Papa. <laughs> nice little shove in the back there. And as we await the extra point, nice angle right there, guys. I like that shot. Good job there by our cameraman. Kick is up and good. Hopefully they hit George in the face. The extra point is good by number 26, Adoni Santos. Adoni Santos. Left in the second quarter. There's a replay of the touchdown. Zero. Rodriguez like, yep, this is mine. Get off me. Number four doesn't have a chance. Nice move right there. I'm going to run into Papa because I can. It's a nice little safe haven for him for a touchdown. Look at a little hugs right there. They're all brothers playing for the same cause. Just to win and disrupt everything in this non-conference game. Seven nothing to score. Let's see a little... Reacts to this. See if they can answer the call. What if the Crimson Tide band does drumline? Just drumline. I gotta ask Gene O'Brien about that. I work with Gene O'Brien, you know, at Fenway. So he, I do security at Fenway, and he does ushering. We have nice conversations. 
catch up on what's going on in and around Everett and Fenway. Here's a kickoff. That's going right in the end zone. And Lowell will take it up to 20. Santos kick goes into the end zone for a touchback. First down and 10 for Lowell at their own 20 out. You see his profile, punting and kicking. Team captain as well. You don't see too many kickers and punters that are captains. It's special right there. Ever it looks like they're in a 4-3. No, no, they're not 3-4. With a stand in the end. Quick out. Caught right away. And met right away by Rodriguez. Looks like got three yards out of that. Wrapped up by number 14, Pedro Rodriguez. Conley's a sophomore. They have a young wide receiver core here. Them little Red Raiders. There's a nice pan, like a session stand. Nice little angle of the Veterans Memorial Stadium. They were going nowhere. That was swallowed up real quick. Jason Stock, the tackle there. Brought down at the line of scrimmage by number 16, Jason Stark. Lowell is in twins right and left again. The D backs are playing tight on them. We have motion coming across. Casey back to pass, looking. Pressure coming. Moves up. Looks like a Ganga Yada too. And it'll be fourth down for the Red Raiders. Casey the ball carrier. Papa in on the stop. Along that was a defensive four. back sack right there. Well, the Ganga Yada too, but still. Fourth down. Papa gets the tackle on that one. Fourth and four for the Raiders. Look at the punt here. Punting deep into their territory. Decent kick. As it bounces right to number five. Legal. Gets a yard or two out of that. Gideon Legal on a return. Gillian Galls, a sophomore. Got a lot of playing time today. You see Coach Flores and the season coaches. Getting ready to get that play out there. Coaching staff. Telling the kids, you know, let's keep this going. We're up seven nothing. Let's make it fourteen. We got five seventeen to go here. Let's make it out of reach for these guys. Turns to the left. Keeps it himself. Off tackle. It's swallowed. Maybe a yard out of that. Is Christian some more? Set live on the tackle. One yard gain in the play, second down. Let's see. Here's the more. It's like, yeah, I'm going to take this myself up the middle. Looks like, yep, number 44 there grabs a, a leg. And you see number 11 <laughs> just spinning around him to make that tackle. We got twins left. Solo wide receiver to the right. Here's Rodriguez. Oh, no, it's not Rodriguez. My apologies. Santiago, the ball carrier. Santiago gets about a couple of yards on that. Lachlan has not come back in yet. He's standing, moving around, though, which is good. Third down and seven. 
Big third seven right here. Trips right. Looks like they're running man here. Back to pass. Oh, just short. Pass is incomplete. I'll make it fourth to seven. Jay Sean Coggins, fourth down. Rodriguez had it, but he, again, he's been throwing it short again. He did it last week and several weeks before that. Throwing off his back foot. He might have run that one, I'm not sure. So Crimson Tide will punt. Santos, senior captain. He'll punt this away. Beautiful kick. And he fails catch it. Smartly done. By number 18. Fair catch call by number 18. Ryan Conley. Ryan Conley. And we'll see Jack Casey and his offense come out and try to get some points up in here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. 340 to go here in the second half. Yeah, this offensive corner wearing shorts in 50 degree weather. Love it. Did you see one of our cameramen, Mr. Laidlaw? Up in there. In the elements. There you see Jack Casey waiting for the snap. We got twins to the right. Motion for the freshman wide receiver right there. Pass is complete to number one. Not much going there. The Crimson Tide defense for that right away. Looks like they lost about four or five yards on that play. Everett's defense penetrated real quick. Got right up field. Broke it up right away. Excuse me. Back to pass, quick. Broke it up by McKenzie. Pass is knocked out at the line of scrimmage by number one, Shane McKenzie. Casey looking to get the ball in the flats, but that was broken up by McKenzie. Third down and 15. Casey, back to pass, has some time. And it's incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Fourth down. We do not have a name for number five because he's on the roster. <laughs> Gherkin punts it for Lowell, deep in the end zone. Nobody's in his football stance. Oh, I would have tried to block it. Oh, oh poison. Oh, he touched Ooh, did he touch it? I think he touched it. He might have touched it. I think he touched it. Yep, Lowell's got it. 20 mental mistakes here in the first half of the Crimson Tide. Fumble on the punt return, recovered by Lowell. Yeah, with the fire or poison. Here we go. His Gideon. It's like, you know what? I'm going to get it. Uh oh, oh, oh. Whoops. Slips, falls right in. Yeah, that touched. I think that touched his foot or his hand. And then he goes in for it also, which didn't. Yeah, yeah as soon as he went in for it, guilty as charged. Right, you're leaving it up for chance at that point. I would have just played dumb there. I'm like, I didn't touch it. Like the AC title game against the Chiefs in pass. Like, Elman's like, I didn't touch it. What? Look. Played it off smooth. Casey back to pass, has some time, going deep, and oh, tipped in the air, oh. Pass is incomplete. 
Broken up by number 19, Joao Barreros. Barreros breaks it up. Got some safety help there. Casey has some time. He can throw. Yep. So like six, six, six sets of hands up there. Got broken up quickly. Ryan Conley, you just saw there. Casey gets it to Conley. Makes a move. Picks up about five yards there. Tackled by number 13. Michael Donald. Excuse me, Donald Michelle. My apologies for butchering your name. I'm saying it backwards. You see the replay? Play action. Beautiful throw. Makes a move. Got a nice five yards there. Chips right. Casey back to pass. It might be a false start or delay a game. Oh, we got a timeout on Lowell. So they got to think about this play. Might as well get 145 to go here in the second quarter. What kind of sorcery will the Red Raiders turn up in this? Will they try a double reverse? Will they do a trick play? I'll just keep it solid. Just fade the sidelines and just throw deep. Let's see our Crimson Tide cheerleaders. Do a little dance, making it fun. You see the coach getting in on it too? Yeah. All right, we got trips right again. Casey back to pass. Zips it out there. Got the first down. It's the freshman. Pass complete to Christensen. Colin Christensen. I think that's his fourth or fifth catch tonight. Tackle by number nine, Kevin Diaz. Stack of the stats. But not before a Red Raiders first down. <sighs> Back to passes. Casey has some time looking. Gets out of pocket. Ooh, that might have been a sack. Could be a sack. It looks like he got it off in time. And that'll stop the clock. Huge for Lowell. Mackenzie right in the Casey's face. Mackenzie the senior. He's got twins on the left and right. National Sandwich Day? I didn't know that. What kind of sandwich? We don't know because that sandwich got picked. It's going to the end zone. Nice play. Great read right there. Pedro Rodriguez. Pedro Rodriguez with the pick six on National Sandwich Day. Now the Crimson Tide about to snap out of it. Huge play. As we await the replay after the kick. Oh, we're going to play it right now. You see Casey's back to pass. Great throw on lane, but he just picked it off. Read it right away. Basically went untouched. Right into the end zone for an easy six. Kenzie there to greet him. Santos back to kick. Ooh, what was that? Woo. Back kick. It happens. 13 nothing in the Crimson Tide with one, one oh, seven to go in here quarter, in the second quarter. 13, Lowell, zero. It's National Sandwich Day. I don't know what kind of sandwich though. Here's another view of the interception. 
Beautiful ball. Cut right in front of the receiver. And look at that. Take it right to the house. Untouched. Crossing the finish line there. Oh, it was false. <laughs> Good job there. Do you see the tie profile? Oh, he's a free safety and safety. All right, and he's a captain. These seniors have two more games. We have another consolation game next week. It's one of the losers in the tournament. In the middle of our Thanksgiving game. See the Crimson Tide and down the three-point stance and kickoff. You don't see that that much. When I played back in the day, we just stood up. That's going right in the end zone. Santos with another touchback. There you see the captain walking off, ripping off his lid. So he kicked the ball in the end zone. So we have trips, right? One down lineman. Hands it off. Got a player room to walk. Yeah, nice little wall. They got wall got broken into. Arrest the ball carrier. Diaz on the tackle. And Diaz on the tackle. Kevin Diaz, the junior. Second Be back next year. Ooh, nice gold back pad there for the rib cage. So they have the rib pads and they have the little back for the little back pad right there. Got trips left now. Casey back to pass. Nice seam pass right there. Out of reach. Looking for. Oh, there's a late flag. Late flag. There was a flag in the play. Could be pass interference, or maybe it was just a little run in his mouth there. Number 18, Ryan Conley. He was chirping at the ref after that throw. We'll see what the call is here. We are holding on the defense. Yep. So Ryan Colney was right to chirp at the ref saying, hey, he was holding me there for a second. And look at the first down, I believe. Yep, that'll be a first down. Put Crimson Tide at the spot of the foul, possibly. And Rod trips right again. Crimson Tide cannot let this team hang around. Here comes pressure, escapes it, and he's sacked. Quarterback sacked on the play by number 16, Jason Stock. Jason Stock on the sack. No relation to Tony Stock, Iron Man. He could be War Machine if he wanted to. Jason Stock Senior. Get that sack on. And I think that'll do it for the first half. No, nope, they got 20 seconds. Oh, time out. Okay. Oh, it's all right. You see the student body? Check out the Instagram or Facebook. No, they don't have Facebook. It's mostly Instagram or YouTube. Do you see Gene O'Brien? Wonder where he got that at. Mm-hmm. 20 seconds to go here. This fan has had enough. Casey back to pass. Completes it. Why she was screen getting a lot of chunk of yards there. Yeah, you heard me. A lot of chunk of yards. Christensen. Moreros on 
Eight seconds to go here, as Lowell called the timeout. Timeout, Lowell. You see Casey out the flats with the wide receiver screen. Nice move right there. The freshman cuts it up. Good tackle there. But number 19 for the Tide. Berrios. Right in the face of the drums. Nice little close up there. Might want to clean that thing. I think it's dirty. So we have 11 seconds on the clock instead of 8. I believe Lowell has one timeout left. So does Everett as well. It's World Jellyfish Day. I'm calling shenanigans on that. I don't believe it. I don't think it's today. I think it's some day in the summertime, like July 13th or 14th. It's a holiday every day, and that's a little bit ridiculous. But that's for another day, another story. Here's the handoff. Ooh, we got some room to run on the outside here. Cuts up inside. And the ball gets loose. Arrest the ball carrier. No, he was down by contact, I believe. Some more on the tackle. We got three seconds left on the clock, and that'll be the last timeout. I believe Eric called a timeout. Someone called the timeout. Oh, that's it. All right. So 13 nothing is your score. Ever a little sluggish here in the first half, but the defense is holding very strong. And we'll be right back with second half action here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. I am Jonathan Bird Marchin. You're watching this on EHS Channel 15 live on the YouTube. And we'll be back with second half action. You might watch the band, you might just watch the screen. I don't know. You have to wait and find out, but I'll be back.
Lynch got on TV that night and said he thought it was the baby. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Second Half Action here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. I'm your host, flying solo today, Jonathan Bertamachant. With the score of 13-0 Everett, scoring for Everett is quarterback number seven, Carlos Rodriguez, in a pick six by Juan Rodriguez. Sorry, Pedro Rodriguez. Getting a pick six in the second quarter here. Rodriguez, this makes the score 13 nothing. So as we await, Thank you, buddy. I think Lowell will get the. No, they won't get the ball. Yeah, we receive first. So I think we're kicking off. Or oh, whatever they decided to do. Yeah, Lowell's get the ball. Defense has been solid. Offensively, a little struggling, but. Not a comfortable 13 0 lead. Lowell's still hanging in there, hanging tough. Hopefully, Chris the Tigers score a few more touchdowns, get these underclassmen in there, get some reps. So, Everett will kick off again. This will probably go in the end zone. So I was back there with my production crew in the truck, and it was National Jellyfish Day and Sandwich Day. We just Googled it all, and it is true. So I apologize to them. And we're about to kick off any second meow. Oh, wow. Line drive. Picked up around the 16 yard line, takes off. Smash. Falls forward. It's about the 32 33 yard line. Nice kick there. Start on the tackle. By Santos. And it's Love Your Lawyer Day. Who doesn't love their lawyer? Well, I can name several people who don't love their lawyers. Anywho, you see Casey back in shotgun formation. We got five wide receivers. Trips the Everett sideline. Twins on the other. A little 18 right there. Catches it. Casey's pass complete to Conley. Conley. Has several catches tonight. Four. He has four. Right Thank you, four. Second, down and four. Second and four for the Red Raiders. <laughs> Casey takes the handoff, gets it back to his. One of his wide receivers, number 18 again. Wrapped up by number 14, Pedro Rodriguez. Pedro Rodriguez making the tackle there. Third down and five. Colin making his second straight catch. Don't sleep on Colin Christensen. Trips to the little side. Going deep again. Yeah, fingertip away. I'm catching that one. Pass is incomplete. Conley, Trying to go three straight. Receiver. Fourth down. There you see the replay right there. All the time in the world. It looks like it come back a little bit. Yep, broke it up. Two sets of hands up there. Can come down with it. Fourth and five for the Red Raiders. That was quick. Serious. Cameron Durkin. Be booing this ball. Nice punt. Good hang time. It gets a good low bounce. Get away from it. Poison, fire, whatever you want to call it. What do they say? Poison, Josh? Yes, poison. So uh, poison's a high school thing. They say fire in college when I played. And they still do. Get 
First down and 10 for the Crimson Tide at their own 40 yard line. Do you see with the own lineman, 68 Mulligan? Riga's going behind Sana. Hand off to the junior. Getting a tough four or five yards right there. Santiago filling in for Demian Lackland. He's still out. You see the replay? Santiago. Good run there. This offensive lineman just face mask him. <laughs> uh, it's Santiago again. Where's Gaskell Santiago face masking his own boy? Santiago on that last play there. <laughs> uh, boys will be boys. Anywho. Again, off tackle. Santiago Stop to the line of scrimmage right there. Maybe a yard. Adenamo on the tackle. Maybe fourth and three. Fourth down. I feel like Santiago setting up for a QB keeper right here. Hey, come back in. Damian Lackland coming back in now. All hydrated. On the Gatorade, I hope. Oh, yeah, basic classic water. Ooh! Great tackle there. But number 11 for Lowell. Seth. Seth Lai. Lowell will take over on downs. Oh, yeah, number 11 and 77 makes the tackle there. Let's see if the Crimson Tide defense can hold here after the turnover on downs. Twins to the left and right again. Casey and shotgun. Takes the handoff, rolls to his right. Getting chased behind, throws in time for an interception. Right into the hands yes, of Christian Zamor. Number two, Christian Zamor. Crimson Tide defense stepping it up. Pressure on the play by number 14, Pedro Rodriguez. Good job of the D line right there. Pushing the QB to his right and just tossing out of there and avoiding the sack. And we got the interception. You see Casey back to pass. Pressure. Just chucks it up there. Throws a duck up there. And Christian Zamor says, I'll take that, thank you. We got trips to the Crimson Tide side. Rodriguez and Lackland back there. Yep, we got a flag. Yeah. Flags on the Red Raiders. I don't know what it's for yet. See offsides? Yeah. Laying up offsides? Yeah, no, the kid jumped in the neutral zone. Okay. Then, uh, jumped in the neutral zone. I know. My dad told me that. He said that Lolo and Lawrence were both very good. They're like the 50s and 60s. Had one Ryan right around the That's right, Ryan. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Let's switch it around going on here on this play. First and five for the Tide. There it is. Jaden makes a move. Stiff Psalms. It's pushed out of bounds. Profit. Profit was first catch of the night. 
Keep it in simple. Dumps it out there. Profit catches it. As you can see right there, great blocking by the wide receivers. Keep his arms inside. Nice stiff arm. And first and ten for the Tide. Trips left. Juggles the ball a bit. Goes a little low. Profit, maybe a yard, if that. Pass complete to Profit. Or no gain at all. Milanazzo on the tackle. Rodriguez loves to throw it low to the wide receivers and tight ends. Noticed that the past couple of weeks, which I mentioned earlier. You see JM Profit. Nice little profile right there. He'll keep it. Get the first down right there. Yep, we got the first down. Carlos Rodriguez, the ball carrier. We get some laundry on the field. There is a flag on the play. Right. Come back. 46. So, <laughs> so Papa gets caught. The block in the back. <laughs> Refs Michael's coming in and out. You see the keep. I don't see the block in the back yet. Yeah. Rodriguez, yeah. Solid run. Couldn't see that camera angle. That's all right. So we have trips to the near side. Nope, twins. Excuse me. Rodriguez, back to pass. Incomplete pass. Pass is incomplete. Zamora, the intended receiver. If he could connect with him, that play has been there all night. Third down. Third and nine for the Crimson Tide. So we have trips right with Rodriguez and Lackland in the backfield. Rodriguez back to pass, gets to the profit with the slant right up the middle. Pass complete to number three, Jaden Profit. Make it fourth and doable now for the Crimson Tide. It's going to set up fourth down and one. Yeah, Christensen's QB now. Yeah, he's going up the gut. Lackland to the outside gets the first down and more. A fresh set of downs for the Tide. Damian Lackland on the carry. That's good for another Crimson Tide first down. Nice little push by the O line right there. Gets to the outside. There's a flag on the play. And there's a flag on the play. Well, hopefully, it's after the play. Could be a dead ball foul. As we await. There he is. Just telling everyone to hold on. <laughs> a dead ball foul on sports like on the Crimson Tide. Rodriguez didn't like that call. Just saw his facial expression right there. He wasn't having it. All right. So it's a fresh set of fresh set of downs, and just pushing back another ten in the previous spot. I 
Lashley coming in off the sidelines. You see Rodriguez and Lackland. Rodriguez back to pass, has all day. Looks around, gets it to Lackland. Pushed out of bounds. Pass complete to Lackland. And that should, yep, it's a first down. Another Crimson Tide, first down. Rodriguez doing a good job. There you see it. He was looking for somebody else. He's like, eh, ain't there. Oh boy, let me just run to the left real quick and dump it off to Lackland as he turns around, makes a spin catch. Hopefully our cameraman's all right. He was right in the action there. Take a little snap on the center. Lackland's off tackle. Lackland, the ball carrier. Looks like a four or five yard gain right there. Second and eight? Oh, wow. Yeah. Dylan Benny. No, no way. That's like he's second and five. Four yard gain on the play. It's down. National Housewife Day. I'm not Googling it. I don't want to believe it. Not too many housewives these days. Good show, though, back in the day. Anywho, Rodriguez keeps it and gets met in the backfield. You got to blow the whistle or just got to let him drag him back 20 yards? And there's a few Crimson Tide players on the ground. Oh, just a little get up. Rodriguez wrapped up on the play by number eight, Samuel Ansa. Looks like he was going for the option there. He decided to keep it. And he got met by a defender right away. Ooh, nice angle right there. Third down and 12. Third and 12 at the 21 yard line. Comes a tight pushed out of the red zone. Rodriguez back to pass, looking, waiting. Nice diving catch. Just shy of the first down marker. Pass is complete to number three, Jane Prophet. Jane Prophet making an impact here in the second half. This is, I think, a third or fourth catch this evening. Fourth down and ten. Oh, my bad. <laughs> fourth down and ten. I thought it was the first down marker there for a second. Oh, I was way off. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. And we shall see a field goal. This will be about 35 yards, right? 35-yard field goal here. Kick is up and good. And that's visible from 20 miles away. And it's good. Make the score. 16 nothing. Santos. And another field goal. Set several field goals this past year. Hopefully, D1 or 2 schools looking at him for field goal kicks. Didn't BC beat Notre Dame one year with the field goal kick? Yes, like the early 90s? 93. Oh. But that kid was like the best kid in the set. That kid otherwise was like not a great kick. BC's pretty good this year. 16 0. Oh, yeah. You score here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Oh, I don't think you're going to get ready. It is now 48 degrees, and you can visibly see 20 miles away. And that crops in front of him, picks it up. That's a lineman. Yes, go, big guy, go. Rumbling and bumbling to the 31 yard line. I love when a kickoff return, a lineman or a fullback gets it. It's very entertaining. You don't know what he's going to do. He's going to go. 
run forward and just put his shoulder down with two hands on the ball. There he is, number 59. That's Manny Dalem. Casey back to snap, hands it off to number one, going deep in the backfield, tries to push it up. I don't think he got back to the, he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Yep, no getting on that. Perez not getting on anywhere there. Had a bad angle on the handoff there. You see it, high snap, that screwed up everything. Yeah, he saw Papa right away, went backwards about five, six yards. You see number nine, Kevin Diaz. The tackle there. Great angle of the band right there. Look at that. Look at that nice tan jacket. Look the jacket. I couldn't pull that look off. You see Jack Casey. Throwing over 100 yards so far. One interception. Woo! Ball's bouncing the air. Nope. Pass is incomplete. Broken up by Broken Elijah up Lester. Lester, excuse me. Good job there, breaking that up. He's a junior, he'll be back next year. Here we go again. Casey feeling the pressure, throwing it up there. Yep, go right in front of the receiver right there, broke it right up. <laughs> that ref was cheesing on that last play, smiling. Back to pass again. Casey going down the middle. Just out of reach. Pass is incomplete. Number 13, Donald Michelle on the coverage. Donald Michelle. Keeping up with 18. For the Red Raiders. They see Lassiter playing corner tonight. Lowell getting the punt. Oh, nice punt. Good punt. Bouncing. Good little bounce. Still rolling. Inside the five? Looks like the two yard line. Solid punt there by the Red Raiders. Cameron Durkin. 50 plus yard punt right there. Whoa. You pound that drum, bud. <laughs> he hit himself. <laughs> Grab himself that pearl drum. Yeah. See Coach Flores. Two of seven to go here in the third quarter. Fire right up the 16 to zip. Because the tide have a long way to go. Let's see if they go 98 yards in this drive. For all you that are wondering, is Marzipan week here in the, these United States. Direct snap. Rodriguez up the gut. Gets the... Close to the first down. Yeah, he's got the first down. Christian Zamora, the ball carrier. That's good for a Crimson Tide first down. Let's see. Oh, it's... Christian Zamora. Being the Wildcat keeper right there. Good job holding on the ball with two arms as the Lowell defense is trying to just rip it out of his hands. Christian Samoa's back there again. 
the Wildcat. Oh boy, bad snap. That's in the end zone. Picks it up. Yeah, he's going to have to take the safety on that one. Smart move. So a bad safety snap. And some of the safety making the score 16 to 2. With 122 to go here in the third quarter. 122 left in the third quarter. Everett 16, Lowell 2. That was cliche day. Look at that. That's not cliche. Yep, just couldn't handle the snap. He could have threw it. Yeah, no, he had no chance of throwing it. Either way, over in safety. Smart move. Just hold on to the ball. Here's a smile. This is the first time he smiled all year. And a laugh. Look at that. So Everett will kick off at the 20-yard line, punt style. Oh, no, they're not punting. Huh, okay, he's kicking off the tee. I didn't know that in high school. You could kick off the tee on a safety. Interesting. Will he boot the ball in the end zone? I'll say he gets to at least the 20-yard line. So the 20 to the other 20. Let's see if he can do it. I have faith. Ooh, bounces. Yeah, just about the 20. He's to the 30, makes a move. Start of steps. Tries to step on. And runs into the 35-yard line. Gain about 14 on that. Foundation Pen Day. Not a fan of the foundation pen. I like the ball ink ones. On this November 3rd of the Lord year of 2023. Let's see if Lowell's offense can get some points on the board other than their defense. 16 to school. 16 to 2 your score. to both sides. Casey gets the snap. Oh, in and out of the hands. But he had to turn around for it. If he threw it in stride, he probably would have had it. Look all in the coverage. Colin Christensen's Colin Christensen dropped that one there. Same formation as the last. KC waiting the ball, looking to pass. Throws it out in the flats. Caught by number one. Nice tackle. Open field tackle by Christian Zamor. Pass complete to Anthony Perez. Anthony Perez. This is the third or fourth catch tonight. Zamor. Third down and five. It's picked up by the tide. Still loose. Looks like they got the ball back. Force fumble on the play. Recovered by Lowell. Pedro Rodriguez with the strip sack. Pedro Martinez, the strip sack. Here we go again. Coming right off the edge. Boom. Look at him. Ball's bouncing around. Oh, right between his legs. Yep. And number 18 gets it back. Oh, ball is bouncing everywhere. Yeah. 
Lowell got lucky there. And that'll do it for the end of the first, excuse me, that'll end the third quarter. With your score, 16 to 2. Fourth and 14. Looks like Everett will get it off the punt here. Got you, Lily. Why you slam the door? Damn, woman. For all those that are tuning in live on the YouTube or just chilling watching it on EHS Channel 15, I am hosting solo today. My name is Jonathan Bredemachin of 985 The Spillet Tub. You can hear me on Touch and Rich, 6 to 10 a.m. Every morning, Monday through Friday, do movie reviews and other silly stuff for them. Look at the moms and grandmas and aunts hanging out. A bunch of the nephews, nieces play football indoor cheer. That's a Wilson ball? Wall has a Wilson ball? Look at that W. That's a wicked W, Josh. That looks like something from the pod in gym class. Right? That's a middle school ball they're using. So we're getting... I don't think it's street legal at all, Josh. Our PA announcer are talking back and forth. Oh, fumbled that one a little bit, but punts it away. Your fire poison. Oh, you... Wait, no, no, no. Wait, no, I got it. No, no, no. They hit the low player first. They hit the low player first. I got it right here. What? They're giving it to him? Billy got the replay wound up ready to go. And I lost the signal. Ah! It's all right. All right, here we go. Bounces up in the air about 15 feet. It hit the low player first. Oh. That's all right. The ref was back there. You couldn't see it from that angle. Ooh, lucky break from them. Yeah, but you know what? The defense has been solid all night. The Everett's defense has given up zero points. So Lowell we're going to score right here. Making things interesting. Freshman catches it again. Gets about a yard or two. Be second nine or eight. It is Manatee Awareness Month. So find a Manatee website and go donate a dollar or two for the manatees in the world. All of them. Casey looking, steps up, starts running. LaMonica with the sack. Making it third and nine again. No getting on that one. You see LaMonica, whoop, stepping up and in. Gets the tackle for no gain. Stock look aggravated and mad about something, but it's all good. Team sport. Monaco with the solo tackle there. Kesey comes the blitz, gets it off in time. Oh, out of reach. Has to stick his hand out, try to bring it back in, but couldn't make it happen. Diaz and Papa on the pressure. Fourth down. Crimson D line. Oh, Papa with the blitz. Oh, he almost had a one arm grab right there. You know what? He's a freshman. He's got a bright future ahead of him in Lowell. If he wants to transfer ever, I don't see a problem with that. Because you can't transfer in the high school level, meow. Which is cool. Casey again. Steps up, dots it down the middle. Breaks the tackle, spins. Nice catch there. Ryan Conley. That's a low first down. Gain of about a lot there. You see Casey? Nice little slant in the inside there. 
Pushes him away, spins away. Couldn't get away from that one, though. Back of the action, right up the middle. That's close to a first down, I believe. Jaden Prophet on the tackle. Perez getting second the first down, down there. Oh, no, he didn't. Second one. My apologies. From where I'm sitting, looked like he got the first down from this angle. Twins to the left and right again. Perez and Casey in the backfield. Chewing up a lot of time now. Perez going the other side. There's Casey looking back deep in the end zone. Nope, nothing there. Pass is incomplete. Durkin, the intended receiver. This will be 31 about the four yard line. Ooh, ooh. Oh, they jumps. They got back. Oh, boy. Watch the ball, boys. Casey looking as offensive corner again. Clock ain't running, so that's a good thing for them. Here's the motion. Delay a game. There has to be a delay a game. False start. This should push back low. Five yards. So <laughs> false start on the Red Raiders pushes him back. Be 36 instead of third and one. Lowe's looking not to run the ball. I mean, they had a great run inside the red zone a couple of plays ago. We got nine yards. But when push comes to sub inside the five, they're just not doing it. They think they're more comfortable throwing in the air. Obviously. Here's Casey again. And he walks right in for the touchdown. Touchdown, low. Number five is not on the roster. Pass complete to number five. Making the score 16 to 8 now. You see Casey. Simple out route. Gets it right in there. Untouched. Making this interesting. Sixteen to eight now. We're gonna make it sixteen to nine. Kick is up and good. Make it a one score game now. Extra point is good by number 19, Ned Akashian. With 8.56 left in the fourth quarter, Everett 16, Lowell 9. If you told me before the game started, it'd be 16 and 9 with 8.56 to go here in the fourth quarter, I would have called you crazy. But here we are. This is reality. This series right here, I would just run it right down their throats. Chew up the clock. And let's get out of here. Right, Josh? Yes, sir. Great job. Chewing up that clock would be great. Some points might be greater, right? We got a tense one here in Veterans Memorial Stadium. 16-9 is now your score. Look for Lowell to go on sides here. Or maybe a pooch kick. Let's see what Lowell does here. Yeah, they're going off sides. I don't know which side yet. Yeah, it's a pooch. There's Christian Zamor. Looked like he was jogging there. He's still on his feet. 
Carrying the team with them. Look at this. It's a rugby. Oh, look at him break the tackle. Let's go. He's still on his feet. Pushing the pile. Getting into every territory. Here comes a flag. How about that return by number two, Christian Zamora? Christian Zamora. Carrying defenders on his back. His team is trying to push him as well. Let's see what the flag's on. Aiden the runner. All right, let's look at this again. Here comes Christian Vasquez. Runs slow up the middle. Then he's got two defenders on him. Breaks those two. Then you have some Crimson Tide players right there pushing him forward in this rugby scrum here. Look at him, just driving the legs, driving the legs, stiffs on that kid out of the way. Yeah, one, two, three, four, every player is pushing him forward. <laughs> Got it into Crimson Tide territory. Excuse me, it's a Lowell's, now it's back in Everett's territory. I think it was like a five yard penalty on that. Whoa, someone jumped. They'll be offsides on the tide. Be first and 15 for the tide. Lackland is out. And Santiago's back in there now. There he is, coming into your frame. Huh? So a penalty is on Lowell. So we get the five yards back. Now we get ten. Oh, we got first and five now. Perfect. Lowell staying disciplined. I'm jumping off sides there. Rodriguez and Santiago in the backfield. What in the... What's going on? Another offsides on the tide. So we first and ten again. Coach Flores doesn't look too pleased. Swings it out. Nice move. Pass complete to number three, Jaden Profit. Profit on the catch. It'll be second and seven now. Second down and seven. Passes low again. He's got to get that ball up into the chest area. And tackled by a host of Red Raiders. Who is that? Is that Santiago? Yes, it is. Santiago getting the first down. And we have some laundry on the field. Manny Santiago on the carry. There is a flag on the play. <laughs> Holding on the offense. Oh, we're calling out names now. Oh, 
Fabrice Michard, the junior, getting called on that hold in there. Let's see where the holding is. I don't see him. I don't see him. Great run there. I can't see it. That's all right. Second and ten now. Rodriguez back to pass. Gets it out to Profit. Breaks the tackle. He's met by a gang of Red Raiders. Pass complete to Profit. Be third and three now. Clock is running. Set up third down and three. There you see. Nice catch right in the chest this time. Breaks that tackle and taken down by three or four Red Raiders. Rodriguez back to pass, looking, goes deep, got man wide open. Oh, he dropped it! Oh, man! Christian Zamora had an easy touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Make it fourth and four now. And they're going to look to punt here. Oh, wait, that was a... F oh, man. Loss of downs on that one. Oh, look at that! Wide open. On a post right there. Deep post. Oh. oh! Easy touchdown, dropped. Oh man. Crypto Tide's got to punt it now. I thought it was fourth down, but it was third. Ooh, hopefully that doesn't bite them in the ass. And we're offsides again. Crypto Tide coming apart. Here in the fourth. So I guess push back another five yards. But have no fear. Santos is kicking this. Hopefully he has a nice little wall there. Oh yeah, he's got boot this thing. Look at that boot! Right to the 90 yard line. Gets about two yard gain on that. That's perfect. That was a perfect punt. So the big question is, can Jack Casey get the Red Rays marching down the field here? They'll have about 89 yards to go with 541 here in the fourth quarter. First and ten to the 11 yard line. What is the offensive line's moving, the wide receivers are all over the place. We got trips to the low side. Casey looks to his left, dumps it out real quick. Number five with the catch. And runs out of bounds and stops the clock. First down, Red Raiders. Number five, we don't have his name. Misprint by Lowell. That's good for a Red Raiders first down. He could be a freshman, he could be a senior. We don't know. But he's a hell of an athlete. First and ten at the 22 yard line. There you see again, Casey. You know, real quick. It's number five. Nice block there by number four. Gets the first down. Casey again, back to pass. Same play other side. To number five again. Oh, he couldn't hang on to it. Oh, we got a late flag coming on the field. 
pass is incomplete. Oh, Flag PA now, so play. Josh thinks it's a illegal screen. Yeah. They, they set a screen on some more. He couldn't get free. This should go as an offensive pass interference. So it could be a possible offensive pass interference. As the Zebras meet and talk it over. As we wait. Yeah, double screen. Beautiful thing. It is 49 degrees. The moon is 62.8 widening gibbous. For all you... Ah, uh, what's it called? Oh, let's get the call first. <laughs> all right, pass interference. <laughs> Wonderful. I don't get it. It's two words. The first one was by mistake. Offensive pass interference. Yeah, loss of down. Yeah. So it's a loss of down. And a loss of maybe five or ten yards. So the moon is 62.8% wagging. Give us, for all of you astrologers out there, whatever that means, good for you, moon. It was for last week. Last Friday in for Halloween. Very creepy. Hope you all had a great Halloween. Veterans Days is coming up on those Thanksgiving. Speaking of giving, Casey completes that pass to number 15. Christensen, the complete pass. You see Casey getting out there real quick to Christensen. Brought down immediately for the Crimson Tide defense. The junior, Samson Nagby. Casey again. Ooh. Looking for an interference there, but nope. There's just a cluster of wire receivers and D-backs grouped up together over there for the incomplete pass. And I'll make it third and th 23. It should be fourth down, right? It was a loss of down. Okay. All right. I thought it was a loss of down on that. Illegal. That illegal, excuse me, <clears throat> screenplay. They're in 23. Big play here for the Crimson Tide. Casey goes deep in the middle. Nope. Oh, he dropped it. I thought he was throwing it right in the middle, but it left. Pass is incomplete. Donald Michelle. Donald Michelle coverage. misses that one. Fourth down. But it's fourth and 23. And a little look to punt it away here. As we got 441 here to go here in the fourth quarter. Oh! In and out of the hands. Nice little jump there at the end. Decent punt. So I will need 40 yards to get another TD here. 4.32 to go here in the fourth quarter. Wind's picking up now at Veterans Memorial Stadium. This consolation game for the Crimson Tide and the Lowell Red Raiders. The score is 16 to 9. Like I said earlier, if you told me the score would be 16 to 9 at the beginning of the game, what a laugh in your face. But here we are. Keeps the ball. Gets to the outside. Some more. Getting a few yards there. Some more on the carry. Some more doing QB duties. Fix the handoff, keeps it to himself, runs to his left. 59 had zero chance of getting him. Oh, no horse call? 
Just grab the back of his shoulder pads. No, we're just let that slide. All right. You see Zamora line up as a wide out now. Second seven for the Tide. Pistol formation. The Prophet got it. Oh, tripped up. That was a leg tackle. Yeah, I was going to say, that was a flag. Pass complete to number three, Jaden Prophet. Flag That's a first down for the Crimson Tide right there. I mean, I think that was legal in the 1930s. So it'll be first and ten for the Tide. He just kicked his leg out. Yeah. <laughs> yep, tripping. Tripping is the call. See it as clear as day. I would love the replay on that, guys. There it is. Ask you shall receive. Oh, that was the play before. Here's Christian going on the outside again. As the offense waits to get the call. We'll see that play soon after this play. But I think we'll see it because I'm going to say it's a touchdown right here. I'm going to call it right now. I'm, I'm calling for a touchdown right now. I'm going to predict it. You see 81 on the slot right here. Give him the seam or a post or a flag route for a touchdown. Oh, I called it! Oh! I called the route, but he didn't catch it. Passes incomplete. Broken up by number 21, Jethro Jackson. Jethro Jackson breaking up for the Red Raiders. So here's the play before. Look at him. Hiya! There's a leg sweep. Yeah. There's a leg sweep right there. Yeah. Really came down. I think Billy, our replay guy, for getting those plays. Our director, our producers, and cameramen doing a great job tonight in this brisk 49 degree weather here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. And we got a timeout. I don't know who called the timeout. I ever called the timeout. Thank you. Some split screen action for you. Both huddles. Everett looking to punch and another TD here. Or maybe even a field goal. 351 here going to the fourth quarter. Tight game going on here. Look at this coach Rand Struts. Love him. He's intense. You see coach. Flores, who's also the offensive coordinator. So now they're going to have people thinking. And you don't have a jump pass probably waiting for uh, a key ball. I wouldn't do it. Why not the spot? So I, I feel like if the one piece scrum happens, you've got to get the guy on the ground. Forward progress is one thing, but if you're going forward, hey, it's simple. Play in the ground and just trip over your body and, you know, get creative. I like the one piece scrum. So we have trips left. Oh, no, don't. Twins. Coach Flores just took him off. So you got Rodriguez and Lackland coming back in. It looks to see a Lackland handoff right here. Yep. Bounces off. Got some room. Gets about 60 yards on that. Lackland, the ball carrier. Here it is again. Lacklin bounces off defender. Gets to the outside. Stops the clock. With 3.44 to go. Yeah. In the fourth quarter. And we have trips to Everett's sidelines. Could see another Lacklin handoff to the right or left. We'll see. Okay, dogs. He could keep it. Ooh. They'll make it fourth and two or three, I believe. So what does Coach Flores do here? Does he go for it or does he kick the three points? Decisions, decisions. Can the little D stop them right here? And they're going to kick it. 
Santos does have the wind with him. So I'm looking at the American flag right now, and it's blowing, looks like to the right of the field goal posts. Someone called a timeout. I'm not sure who. See, look at that thing blow. It's probably 15, 12 miles an hour. We gotta get a light on that thing. It's too dark out there. There you see the head coach. There you see the head coach, J.M. Cullen. So Profit will hold. Santos will kick. You might see a fake field goal here, or he just might boot it right through the middle. But Flores has a lot of faith in the defense. Kick is up, and it is... No good! Wide right. The field goal attempt is no good. Low plays are pumped right now. Let's see if the defense could hold on to a seven-point lead here. 337 to go. Had plenty of leg on that one, but it was just wide right. Looks good. Good kick. Just went. Yeah, wide right. Kicking a duck to the right. It's all right. Crimson Tide defense needs to step up here. With 3.32 to go in the fourth. Well, has 80 yards to go to possibly tie it up or go ahead here. Do you see Casey get the signals from his offensive coordinator? We got trips to the little Everett sideline. Slant right up the middle. Excuse me, post. Post right up the middle. I always get my slants and posts mixed up. He got some of that field turf in his eye. He's a squints. Twins on both sides. Casey looks left. Pass is caught. Nope, dropped it. Making it second and ten now. Broken up by number 13, Donald Michelle. Donald Michelle. Doing a great job here on defense. Let's take a look at another look. Second down. I thought he caught it there for a second, but it looked like he's, yeah, his body language just said, no, nah, it's not going to happen. As he went across his body and the ball came loose. Same formation as before. One down lineman for the tide. Everyone else is standing up. Getting ready to rush on back there. Quick out. I believe you caught it. Yep, you caught it. Clock is still running. Pass complete to Christensen. Michelle on the tackle. Christensen running his mouth. Didn't like that. Whoever was defending him. We'll see it again. Casey. Right to Christensen. Oh, Everett got away with the face mask there. Keep counting your lucky stars. Casey again. Out route again. Met immediately by Christian Zamor. So we got fourth and six now. Fourth and six. Let's see what happens here. Trips to the low sidelines now. Everson cover two. Another out. And they got it. Pass is caught by number 18, Ryan Conley. Number 18, Ryan Conley. That's good for a Red Raiders first down.
Lower Red Raiders. Again, the Crimson Tide. Side over here, nervous. Casey with the pass. They're just doing curl outs and out patterns. Christian Zamor on the coverage. Second down. Second and ten for the Red Raiders. So they do twins this time to the Lowell and Everett sidelines. Been shotgun all night. Here comes the blitz. Casey scrambling, gets all outside of the box. Running for his life, gets out of bounds. Lamanca is right there. Getting ready to give him a nice little hit there. And you see LaMonica in stock. Third and ten now. At the Red Raiders 43 yard line. Casey looking, going deep, in the air, broke it up. Pass is incomplete, broken up by number 81, Elijah Lassiter. Lassiter breaking up there. Be fourth and ten for the Raiders. Here you see it again. Looks left, then he looks right real quick. He said, ooh, <laughs> couldn't hang on to it as he was twisting and turning in the air. Ryan Conley couldn't come down with it. Massive play right here. Got some offensive linemen moving around. Five wide receivers. One down lineman, and Eric calls a timeout. Coach didn't like something he saw there with the five-hour receiver set. And they're out of timeouts. Lowell has all three. Couldn't hide. Holding on to a seven-point lead. If you told me that earlier today, I would have laughed. But it's 16 to 9 right now. Lowell with a 2 and 6 record. Showing the 7 1 Crimson Tide team. Hey, I know we both didn't make the playoffs, but show us a little respect. Back to the five wide receivers. Oh, excuse me, twins on both sides. Here we go. Going deep down the middle, and that's going to be broken up. Passes incomplete. And the Crimson Tide will take over on down. He wanted that pick, but you know what? It was fourth and ten. This is a nice ball. Yep. There you have it. Christian Tide take over. On the 44 yard line. 121 and go here in the fourth quarter. It looks like hopefully they'll just take a knee and we'll just take it home. But Lowell has all three of their timeouts. Okay. So this is a huge series right here. Because after this first run play, whether it's two or three yards, they're going to call timeout. He is not happy right now. Looks like he's about to take a nap. I don't blame him. Yep, taking a knee. Did the little cold timeout? Yes, they did. 
So Albert will have to run a play here. Or they can just down three times and just punt it away. I mean, if you want to do that, cool. But special teams, anything can happen. Everett is in victory formation. And Lowell calls a timeout again. Back to back. Timeouts, and we'll probably get a third one too. Everett hanging on to a seven point lead. One oh four to go here. Ruffy and I'll let our timekeeper make it one away, please. And he has done so. Look at these guys. What's in that cup, buddy? That's definitely not soda or coffee. There you see Santos's mom texting dad and the family. The clock is running, they didn't call a timeout yet. I think they might have one more, so they will probably call it after this one. I'll be on the heads up, I, I'm okay with that. RPA announcer Josh is giving you the heads up here, talking to me, yeah, I appreciate that. Clock's ticking away. 40 seconds. I don't know what strategy Lowell's thinking, but here comes a coach on the field. Okay, it's fourth down. It is fourth down? Fourth down now. Stop, yeah, stop, yeah. That stops the clock, correct? Yeah, yeah. 23 seconds to go. And they'll take a five-yard penalty, too. And there's a flag on the play. I don't know if it's because of the delay of game or... Yeah, it's just for that. Okay. Gotcha. All right. And then Everett just took a timeout. They had no timeouts. Oh, someone did that. Someone, someone's talking to someone. And Lowell did. But there's a timeout on this punt because this is... Uh, so it looks like Everett will possibly punt or just run the ball and just run around and just kill the clock. Yeah. Either team has a timeout left. There's George chilling in the bucket. Had a sip of his drink. You see Profit. 25 seconds to go here, looking for another W. You very rarely see Everett in a tight game like this. And Everett has kept their composure and their discipline to hang on to the 16-9 lead. Some more in the backfield. Yeah, hang on to the ball here. Whether he's... Oh, no, sorry. He's just a safety net man. Santos back there. Getting ready to punt. Oh, boy. Woo! Line drive kick. And they'll go right into the end zone. Ooh, that was going to be blocked there for a second. And we have more laundry on the field. Santos Pop goes into the end zone for a touchback. There is a flag on the play. Might have been hitting the kicker. Run into the kicker, possibly. We'll see. Josh, cue up that ref. Let's see what he's got to say. It is? Yep. Rough the kicker. I called that. And that will do it. 
That's the game. Everett holds on to a 69 consolation game W. And they are the GBL champs. Is Lola even come out on defense? No, we're just going to line up. What are we doing here? All right, we got to do the personal foul. I'm sure you heard our PA announcer, Josh, saying that should be it. Look at Layla and his beautiful golden flow. Wish I had hit like that. And we'll take a knee in the W. And that'll do it here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. As the clock ticks away, Everett escapes the 16-9 W over the Low Red Raiders. So we'll be playing one of the losers in the MIA playoff bracket. We don't know who that is yet, but we will be traveling on the road. And that'll do it here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. We'll have one more game next Friday. Where? We don't know. But I'm sure you'll keep you updated on the internet. And they'll do it here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. 16 to 9, your final. The GBL champs will be awaiting one of the losers in the MAA bracket. And I want to thank my producers, directors, and cameraman, Pianasa Josh, everyone in the truck. Thank you very much. I am Jonathan Burmachant of 985 The Sports Hub, flying solo tonight. Me and Josh should be announcing next week, and we will see you all next week for another Constellation game against who? We don't know. And they'll do it here on EHS Channel 15, live on the YouTube. We are out.